What's going on YouTube? My name is ADC Art Attack. His name is Bob. His name is Larry. Her name is Sally. And welcome back to a brand new video. <laughs> Alrighty, so in the last video, I received so many requests for this. The last video, we compared the Arteza Everblend markers to some Faber Castells, and the results were really crazy cool. Now, if you do want to see that video, if you did miss that video, I'll leave a link down below in the description. Make sure you check it out. It's pretty good. However, I will be using them in this video, so you probably don't need to leave this video. You can just stay right where you are, sit back, and relax. So where was I? Oh yeah, so the comparison. You guys want to see me compare them with the Pro and Brush markers by Winsor & Newton. These things here. Now for those who don't know, I've been using Pro and Brush markers for the last eight to nine years. I have accumulated a massive, massive set. And while I don't get paid by Winsor & Newton, I do love their products and I do heavily promote them. Which means bridges are going to be burned today because I am an affiliate of Arteza, which is going to make things really awkward. That being said, Arteza makes some really nice products and I will be putting a link down below in the description if you'd like to click on it, check out their stuff. If you buy anything, I make a little something out of it and they do have some great products. In particular, something I would recommend would be getting the pencils. I think the pencils are really nice and of course these Everblend markers that we are using today. Whether or not they're better than the Pro Brush markers, we're going to find that out in a moment. But last time, they were pretty good. So, I don't know. If you want them, go for it. Okay, so this entire set of Prime Brush Markers will cost you $500. Now that sounds like a crazy big number, and it is. $500 is a lot of money to most people, especially me. I'm an artist on a budget, I don't spend money on art supplies, but $500. It's a lot. However, if you spend $500 on the Winsor & Newton Pro and Brush Markers, you will get yourself over 250 markers. That's a lot of markers, and with some quick maths, that comes to just over $2 per marker. Really cheap, especially when compared to most alcohol markers. But if we take a look at these guys, one second. These are the Arteza Everblend markers. Now this is just a bag of course, the markers themselves are inside this bag. You get a little look right there, just a sneaky look, have a look. There they are, it's a nice tease before I show them off. This pack will run you a total of $120, which is significantly cheaper than the Pro and Rush markers. However, you only get 120 markers, but with some quick maths once again, you'll find that that comes into a price at $1 per marker, which is crazy cheap. That is really, really cheap for alcohol markers, so yeah. Now, as is tradition, I will be doing a split screen drawing for you in a moment, which means I'll be doing a drawing and I'll be cutting it in half. On either side of that, I will be using the respective markers, thus comparing the results at the end to see which one was better. I'll also be keeping the styles relatively the same as to make it as fair as possible. However, there will be no holding back, which means this thing, can you see it? This is a Winsor & Newton brush marker, which actually goes hand in hand with the Pro markers. They are the same markers, make no mistake. They're just named differently because they have a different nib. So this thing is allowed. This may give an edge to the Pro brush markers. However, I do like the chances of the Everblend markers. They were pretty good. So this is gonna be a fun video. But well, with that all being said, let's dive right into this. There's no need to test the pens because we know what they're like. We're used to them both. So, yeah. I'm gonna be talking you through a lot of the stuff that I do in this video, speaking you through any tips and tricks that might help you with your own coloring. And if you are afraid of using alcohol markers, don't be. They're actually quite relatively easy to get into. And I will explain that as we get into the video. So please sit back, relax, and let the battle commence. All right, everyone, so before we actually get started, we need something on this paper because right now it's pretty boring, it's pretty bland. All we got right there is a pencil and that just ain't gonna do it. And I figured that, well, we do a lot of superheroes on this channel, so why don't we do some super villains? Because I know there are many evil people watching this video right now who just love the villains. So that's what we're gonna do today and I figured we would pick the best of the best, Doctor Doom. Now with that being said, before we actually go any further, I just have to ask this question to you. Who would you like to see as the next big villain in the MCU? Leave your comment down below because I would very much like to see Doctor Doom. Now I picked this character today because one, Doctor Doom is an absolutely incredible character and two, his color palette is very nice. He has a lot of greens and a lot of grays, which are two colors I really do like and they do test the abilities of these markers quite well. There's also so many things we can do as he has magic, which we might bring into this later on. We'll see how it goes. The reference I'll be using today is this one and I don't really like it too much so there's a lot I'm going to change to this. I'm actually just going to be using this pose as the sort of reference. I will be changing the head, the face, as well as a few other things to suit my likings and hopefully you'll like that. But this is not about the drawing, this is about the colouring so let's quickly finish that up and get on with the colouring.
Alright, so here we are. The drawing is done. And I actually really like this image. I think it looks pretty good. I don't know. What do you think? Do you like it? I like it a lot. Let's get on with colouring it in. I mean, that is why you're here. Okay, so I figured, look, we're going to start with the Everblend markers because, hey, they're the challenger and why not? Now, I did say before that we're going to use a style that matches both of them. And as these ones are going first, they're going to dictate the style for us. And yeah, they're called the Everblend markers, which means they're probably marketing towards blending. So that's what we're going to do. And we are going to blend excessively. See, I figure the old saying, go big or go home, really does apply here. I would really like to go for a more comic book style with less blending more cell shading type stuff. A little bit of blending here and there, but nah, we're gonna go really heavy with the blending. I'm gonna push it to its limits, and while this may make the piece of artwork look ugly, I don't know, it's not about the artwork. It's about how do these pens perform versus the prime brush markers. Now with this side, I am basing with a yellow color, and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to have a great luminosity to this. Because we are implementing his magic into this one, I need a bit of a glow, and I figured yellow would do that. Which it did, and it does. The blending of these pens is absolutely fantastic. The ink flow is a little slower than I would probably like, and it means that you just have to slow down your coloring style, which kind of goes against what I'm used to. But that's just a negative from my point of view. You may have a different way of doing your artwork, so this may work for you and it may not be a problem but the blending is just it's really nice across the board the colors really do work well with each other and the intensity and the brightness and the depth of these colors is just beautiful they almost have that kind of brightness that you get with those felt markers and it's very hard to find these in alcohol markers so i'm very surprised here the pigment is just so beautiful the colors are vivid and they look nice however we must not forget the term that I like to use, which is the crow effect. You see, we see something that's bright and shiny and we look at it and we instantly say, hey, that is great. But we never look at it with a critical eye. We never look closely at it. You'll see this in many of my artwork and other artists. They tend to use bright colors and it's quite appealing. It draws the viewer in. But if you actually look at it closely, it's not the best piece of artwork ever. So how do these look when you get close? Well, these actually don't look too bad. There isn't too much streakiness. Many of the colors actually work well together and they have a great color range. Now, as we move on to coloring the larger areas, this is where the faults of the markers start to show through. The ink flow is not fast enough to keep up with my pace of coloring. Again, this is a personal problem. This might not be the same for you, but yeah, in this large area, it's quite streaky and it's a little bit frustrating. You might have to double layer it, but this is where I do my base colors and why I do my base colors, because they alleviate the need to do double layering. It doesn't matter if there's streaky colors because that base layer is going to be covered up. It's just there to either enhance the overlay or again, to just remove that white base. So it doesn't matter too much. And this is just one of those tips. If you are someone who is afraid of using alcohol markers, it is totally understandable because I was once in that position. And let me just say, and let me just remind you guys, you will learn so much from using them by experience of using them yourself. It's where you learn the most. Watching these videos is great and all, and it might give you something you may not have realized or known, but you will learn best when you jump into it and try it. So definitely get out there and try new things. I did notice when we moved on to doing the arm that I was having a little bit of a struggle here with doing the sort of chromey metal style. So I just scrapped that instantly. I don't know why I wasn't really able to get the blending I wanted with these greys. I really don't know what happened, but the greys just weren't blending the way I wanted them to. So I just scrapped it and went for a sort of flat kind of metallic look. And by the end of it, it has great depth. And that is sort of a great trick for hiding mistakes. It's just apply a huge contrast of light to dark and it really does just throw it off because that just looks great. I really like doing that. I tried to apply some highlights to this, a sort of highlight overlay with the green, because I'm going for a green magic kind of aura thing. 
and it's going to give a green glow off. That said, with a bullet nib, it's really difficult to get the glow. You can't, as I say, really go from the dark to the light tone, so it's kind of like a flat highlight. Doesn't really work too well here, unfortunately, and this is one of the faults of these pens. But anyway, what I'm going to do is quickly finish this one up, and I will get back to you in a second before we move on to the pro and brush markers. Alrighty then, there it is. This looks pretty good. Um, no, it looks really good actually. I really, really like this. And what I'm gonna do is jump into the Pro and Brush markers right now because they have been scratching at the table. They just wanna get involved. So we're gonna let them do that. And we'll come back at the end of the entire video to review this one alongside the Pro and Brush markers. So let's get out the Pro and Brush markers. Okay, so jumping into the prime brush markers, we've got to mirror the style that we did on the left hand side. That was the rules and this is going to be the way that we're going to test how these things operate, how they work. So yeah, obviously there are some folds that are going to be different and stuff like that, but we're just going to try our best to do the same on the other side in terms of the style. Now immediately switching over to these things, there is a massive difference and you can feel it. The pro and brush markers, well, let's just talk about the pro markers specifically right now. They feel so much smoother. They don't feel like you're having a fight with the paper. You don't feel like you're scratching the paper away, which you kind of did feel with the Arteza ones, purely based on the fact that the Artezas have a much harder nib to these pro markers. Also, the ink flow is ridiculously fast. It's so much faster than the Arteza ones and you really notice it coming right off of them. For me, this is perfect. This suits my art style to the T. It allows the inks to stay wet for a little bit longer and yeah, just blending is just very nice. That being said, I am already noticing there is some heavy bleeding. Now, it's probably difficult for you to see it, but it is bleeding very heavily when compared to the Arteza ones. These do bleed a lot more on this paper. Again, I'm using sketch paper here, which is just my standard paper I use for pretty much all of my pieces. I'm not too sure why they're bleeding so much right now, but when you're blending, it's not too bad. It's just when you come to the outer edges, it's probably gonna bleed outside the lines, which that's gonna suck if it does. You'll notice that I didn't do a yellow base here. Now there is actually a reason for that and it wasn't that I was just trying to put the pro markers down because obviously I want the pro and brush markers to excel. But I figured, look, we're going to take advantage of these markers. We have the brush marker variant and the brush marker variant is going to allow us to do some overlaying and to get a very smooth sort of light to dark tone or dark to light tone with just one pen. So I'm gonna use that for my highlights and hopefully that is gonna allow me to overlay on top of this if it doesn't, uh, then, oops, <laughs> oh boy. The pigment of these pro and brush markers are clearly not as bright as the Arteza ones, which is actually quite shocking. I didn't think it would be much of a problem, but yeah, they're not as bright. They're actually quite dull compared to them. That's not a good thing 
if you want to go for this particular style. Now, if you were going for a more realistic style of artwork, these would probably be the option that you want to go for. But when doing this style of artwork, I don't know, maybe it's just because it's next to the Arteza markers that it looks so dull, because I don't really see much of a problem when I'm using them by themselves. So, I don't know, maybe my eyes have just been closed this entire time and I've never noticed, but I'm, I'm pretty certain it's not too much of a problem. It's just compared to them next to it, it, it looks worse than it is. Now the coverage of these markers, particularly in the larger areas, are way more superior than the Arteza ones. That is due to the ink flow being so fast and also you get a much smoother coverage. Now obviously with the base colours it doesn't matter, I just scribble away and actually my base colours are running out of ink. Which is a problem I run into while using these Pro Brush Markers. My ink has run out in a few of them which is a little bit of a problem. But I do have other colours at my disposal that I'm going to jump over and use. So there's, it's okay, it's not too bad. But as you'll notice later on in the video, the reason I did that sort of square background is to test the coverage of the markers, specifically with the black markers because they are the ones you kind of notice the coverage most. Now as we move on to doing the arm, the arm that we did with the Arteza marker, we had tried to do a chrome but we couldn't get the blending correct, so I had to scrap it and go for just a standard metal look. With these Pro and Brush markers, I don't really have that problem. I have the Brush marker variants at my disposal which are going to allow me to do some very nice transitions from light to dark tones. That means I don't actually need to use my blender at all. And yeah, I figured why not, we'll just go for the chrome style. Now the colours here are not as dark as the Arteza ones. So overall this is going to have quite a lighter effect and I don't really want to grab the black to do any of the shadows on the chrome. It might throw it off so if I do use the black it will be very sparingly. Just because I can't really use the darkest grey I have to blend in with it so it's going to look a little bit weird. But I will say one of the best things I've got right here is the fact that I can use these brush markers to do highlights. So applying the highlights, those green highlights, they look really good and yeah, they're nice. I like them. Oh, here's that coverage bit. Um, so as you can see, the coverage is just way superior. Uh, with the greens under the cape, I, I was using a green that was running out of ink, so that wasn't really, that didn't count. But um, with the black area and the overlay on top of that green, you can see it's just way smoother. It works so beautifully. You don't actually have to double layer with it. So yeah, these things, they have a smooth, even, great coverage. And while they do lack the pigmentation of the Artezas, it's not too bad. Anyway, what I'm going to do right here is just shut up because there is really so much talking going on here and so much information to absorb. I think you kind of get the point. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the rest of this play out and I will catch you in a moment where we are going to review both of these side by side. And um, I'm very curious as to what you think of the results by the end. Catch you in a moment. Doom, 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 doom. I want to be like Doom. <laughs> Dr. Doom, he is done. 
what do you think about it? I think this looks pretty good. I really do like the results here, but looking at them side by side, it's quite hard to tell what's going on individually. So let's take a closer look at them, starting with the left-hand side. What can you say? The Everblend markers are absolutely fantastic. The color range is extensive and the colors themselves are extremely bright and vibrant. The blending was smooth for all intents and purpose. And while it did struggle on some of the larger areas, there was always a way around it and to be honest, I'm very happy with the outcome of these pens. The final result looks pretty good for the most part and I'm very, very happy with this. While we did make several mistakes along the way, I think we played to the strengths of these pens and all in all, I really did like them. Taking a look at the pro and brush markers, well, what can be said about these that hasn't already been said throughout my many, many videos of them? Well, I guess we can start by saying when they're next to these Artezas, suddenly they're a little bit dull. They don't quite have that vibrance that I thought they did. And it wasn't really a matter of my color picking skills. It just doesn't seem to have that much of a vibrant pigment. However, that's only a problem if you're going for a particular style. I do like the way they look, so I'm very happy with the results here. They certainly felt a lot smoother to work with, but overall, I think they did slightly lose out to the Arteza Everblends here. I don't know, when we look at them side by side, the one that does stand out is the Arteza Everblend. Now that comes down to that crow effect I like to talk about. I've kind of made up a medical condition here, but basically when it's shiny, when it's bright, we gravitate towards that. Does it mean it's better? That's up to you. Have a close look at the two of them side by side and let me know which one you prefer. And with that being said, let's take into account what they cost. The Arteza Everblend on the left hand side cost $120 for 120 markers. That is $1 per pen. What do you think of it? Did you like this side? Or do you prefer the Pro and Brush markers by Windsor & Newton? The entire set will cost you $500 for 250 pens. That is $2 per pen. Meaning these are exactly double the price of the Arteza Everblend. Are they worth the results? Let me know down below. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am beat. It is time for me to say goodbye. I've been working on this video for the last six days. It has just been an insane journey. Thank you all so much for the support on this series. It's incredible. I really mean it. Thank you so much. Please do not forget today's questions. Which villain would you like to see in the MCU? And which side did you prefer? I look forward to reading all your comments. Thank you all so much for watching. From myself, from Bob, from Larry. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.